was it you were the writer in the residence? When when was it that you were what years was it you were the writer in residence? Uh Dumfries and Galway, nineteen ninety six to ninety eight. Right. So what was it you young. did when you were the writer in residence? Well it was mainly working skills. It was uh, Grant, uh, there's, there, at the time there were uh, 15 secondary skills in Dumfries and Galloway, I think there's slightly more now, and I worked in 12 of them, um, on a timetable basis through the week. So I'd, I'd get into a school for a, between a week and four weeks, and, uh, and they'd have a timetable set off me to work with different sort of age groups of wains and stuff like that, uh, but they'd leave the content uh, usually up to me, mm -hmm. uh, what I was going to do with them. And... Um, Sometimes, you know, you'd be working off a of syllabus stuff that, you know, j just to help them creatively. Mm -hmm. But, you no, know, most of the time you were working with stuff that, that, that so I was working with stuff that I could work with. So it'd be monologues, uh, personalised vices, uh, voices, no vices, if you can, what I mean. Uh, and poetry and different types of poetry, mm -hmm. lyric, uh, speech, Scots or English. Mm -hmm. You know, and I enjoyed the Scots thing because they can't Scots already. They just didn't can the can't Scots. Mm -hmm. They had to be tell. Uh -huh, it's uh -huh. all right to talk like that. It's all right to write like that. Because at the time, even in the mid nineties, it was still a bit kind of. We're getting there, and mm -hmm. we're we're a, we're a wee bit not quite as far as we are now. No, no, but it, no, it was. It's been a big change in the last five years, but before that. I, I think so, I but uh, you know, leave aside all the, the sort of ins and outs of it all, uh, but it was still, it was a, it was a bit of a challenge and all, because um, Fries and Galloway was a big area, mm -hmm. right, and it's stretching all the way from Langham, over in the east, out of Stranraer and the Clayhoe, over in the west, and the variety uh, of Scots that spoke was to me was interesting, mm -hmm. especially for somebody that comes from just up the road in Ayrshire. There was a there was a lot of differences in accent, different words, different types of Scots, uh, you know, and stuff that I'd never heard before. Did you ever have that? Did you ever have kids saying things that you didn't know what they were saying to you? Well, uh, as I said to you earlier on, um, I was stood in the front of a class in uh, the Fries Academy in time, and uh, there was a wee boy down the front wouldn't he stop by them. And he was, he, was, he was just putting me off, really. So everything that I tried sort of fell in death logs with him. And uh, <laughs> eventually I just said to the rest of the class, that oh, boy's off a chat here. And they all fell a bit laughing. And I think they're, they're laughing an awful lot. I've all said that, so he blathers too much. And, eventually, and the boy looked at that kind of front it, black of front it, waiting at the back, but they're hung up. And I, and I says, uh, aye, what is that? He says, uh, uh, you've just called that wee boy dirty. And I says, what? That's all I said was he's chatty and they all started laughing again and I says, what do you mean? And they said, oh, chatty means dirty and them free, so I never get that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it could have been slightly, but thankfully he come round and uh, mm -hmm. he was all right. But uh, yeah, yeah. places like Langham, for instance, you know, they were using a lot of Scots out there, um, very brave Scots. Mm -hmm. um, out of the West, in Stranraer, Newton Stewart, the Markers, uh, the Rins of Kells, right about there. And were they writing in Scots when they were doing their creative work? Well, when we worked in Scots, aye, mm -hmm. aye. Mm -hmm. and, but it was one of them where you had to, to let them care it was all right. Uh -huh. uh, you, weren't a, you weren't a teacher, mm -hmm. you weren't a pupil, you were somewhere in between. Um, so it was extracurricular. At the end, you had to emphasise that we're doing it for the fun. Yeah. But then out of that, we used to get a lot of sort of war exhibitions um, and, and they all sort of spoken word event or performance or teachers, or parents, oh, or right. both, or other pupils. Uh, I set up residential uh, writing weekends on both years, you know, at Maybe Forest, uh, and you know, uh, Barony Agricultural College, don't ask, it's a good venue. And um, and on in each of them, I had a writer coming down and working with them in Scots, so the first year was uh, at Maybe Forest, it was a whole weekend, I think. Uh, the first year, year was uh, Janet Paisley come down and worked with them in Scots. Mm -hmm. Ian Crichton-Smith come down and worked with them in English. The second year, I had uh, a songwriter uh, called Lionel McClellan. He used to be in a band called Black Eyed Buddy from Moffat. Tremendous fellow. He's, unfortunately, he's, he's, he's no way as now. And he worked with him in Scots and Scots Lyrics. So whenever I was working with him or setting events up for them, be it in the skill or elsewhere, I made sure that there was Scots involved. Okay? And they had great fun with it. And depending on the type of, sort of exercise, if you used, for instance, the old... Poetic form called a kenning. You come at kenning us. No, what's a kenning? Well, ke the word ken is a Scots word anyway, but it's not originally. It comes from uh, Nordic languages uh, mm -hmm. to, to know, but it, it doesn't just mean to know something. It means to 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 know it. 
to, to know its essence, to ken what makes it up, the mm. author, author thing about it. And a kenning's just a type of poem you write, a, wee, a short kind of poem to describe uh, a thing without actually naming it. So um, you find it a lot in Viking terminology. Like, they never cried uh, their, their sword or sword. They cried at a skull splitter. Or mm. like, uh, so we go into the wains like that. Like you say, right, write a poem. It works best with stuff like animals, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, um, or a boat, you know, they would, you wouldn't cry a, a boat, a boat, you'd cry it like a wave cleaver, or, uh, I don't care what I mean, you would uh -huh. use up, you would make up metaphors right. to right. describe it without naming it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a poetic way of naming something, it's a kenning, so right. you ken what it is through the description. And they used to love stuff like that, and illustrating that, mm -hmm. and that, because a lot of Scots words are about sort of movement and colour and agrarian language, mm -hmm. the kind of language of the countryside, really. A lot is to do with weather, um, temperature, um, kind of all this kind of movement, sound, mm -hmm, or that kind mm -hmm. of thing, and, and that was ideal for it. So that kind of thing they loved, and I, and I loved working with them. And it depended again on where you went. Um, if you went to someone working a, a skill like uh, I don't know, Ken, Dalbeatie or Castle Douglas, um, the Wains there, their, their Scots would be as strong. But if you went, so, so they would have fun learning it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you went to a skill like Stranor Academy or up at Sankar, where Scots is still quite spoken, it's still quite bred and quite common, then um, they were a fun because they knew a lot of what you're talking about. Uh, right. um, but, but, but but you working with them kind of made it for them uh, more real, more mm -hmm. accept it, and mm -hmm. oh, this is great, we can do this. So great fun, I for for me and them both. Interesting. And and that's what we did. That's what I did as a writer, that's part of what I did as a writer mm -hmm. residence. Because when I came in, I had a, a blank canvas, really, and I said, just do what you want. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they liked it or not, they were getting scotch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thanks.